Hello, I'm Dr. Herman, and welcome back to HopeForYourCancer.com or whatever other site you're watching this on because I think I'm going to mix this video around so everybody can see because this can happen to anyone at any time or there any of their family members. I talked about in another video about mycoplasma, a little kind of bacteria. It can mimic Lou Gehrig's disease. It can mimic multiple sclerosis. It can even be found causing human stomach cancer. You know, if there's an infection causing a cancer, do you want to use drugs like chemotoxic drugs to kill the cancer cells? Or would you maybe think it might be logical to see, do I have an infection that maybe I need to get rid of? Because that's causing the problem. And that's up to you. I'm not here to be your oncologist. I never said I was. I'm not here to treat your cancer. I'm not here to fight your cancer. I'm here to look for causes of your condition and help you eradicate those causes so your body can come back to life. Okay? Reverse cancer naturally. Mycoplasma, infection in gastric carcinoma and its effects on the malignant phenotypes, malignant stomach cancer cells. Uh, and there's an article here, excuse me, there's too many different Asian names I can't uh, pronounce right now, but this mycoplasma infection has been postulated to play a role in the development of several types of cancer. Mycoplasma in gastric cancer, immunohistochemistry assay called the PCR testing, polymerase chain reaction, PCR testing, were performed to examine the mycoplasma infection in gastric cancer cancer tissues. Mycoplasma infection in gastric cancer tissues was revealed and statistical analysis indicated a significant association between mycoplasma infections, lymph node metastasis, Lorenz classification, TNM stage, and the age of patients. Mycoplasma hyorhinus, is it called, or hyorhinus, promoted tumor cell migration, invasion, and metastasis in vitro and in vivo. So it creates cancer, it makes the cancer metastasize, it causes lymph node metastasis. This bacteria caused the cancer. Gastric carcinoma specimens in stomach cancer. 61 freshly resected specimens from patients with gastric carcinoma were collected in the Beijing Cancer Hospital in Beijing, China. Informed consent was obtained from each patient and the study was approved and supervised by the Meth Medical Ethics Committee of Peking University Cancer Hospital and Institute. Within 30 minutes of removal, cancer tissues were transported to a laboratory in an icebox and processed on a petri dish. And they talked about some more te technical things here, but they, everything was done to the T to make sure that they could not have any kind of tainted specimen, okay? And what they found here was that the mycoplasma infection uh, was in the cancer tissues. Let's just get down to the bottom line here so I can read you just the, the main points here. Um, 39 samples were positive for the mycoplasma infection. Among them, 19 were also positive for a second type of mycoplasma infection. So 39 of the 61 were positive for one kind of of this mycoplasma bacterial infection and the other 19 had two of these kinds of bacterial infections in them. This finding was confirmed by sequencing of the PCR amplified DNA sequence analysis and followed up and revealed that there was significant association between mycoplasma infection and lymph node metastasis. There was more lymph node metastasis in mycoplasma infection group than in the non-infected group. That means that the bacterial infection that got in the body is making the system worse and the cancer is worse. More mycoplasma infection was observed in diffuse type gastric carcinoma than in intestinal type. In addition, older patients were prone to be infected by the mycoplasma. Mycoplasma Hyorhinus, I don't know the correct pronunciation, excuse me. It promotes tumor cell colony formation, migration, and invasion. Mycoplasma hyorhinus stimulates tumor metastasis in mice. 
Therefore, mycoplasma, and uh, there was a whole other paragraph I took this bottom statement from, mycoplasma heterogeneous infection could activate different types of cancer-producing cells. Interestingly, we found that mycoplasma fermentans infection in gastric cancer tissues was always accompanied by the mycoplasma hyorhinus infection, but mycoplasma hyorhinus infection could exist independent of the mycoplasma fermentans. Therefore, the results provides the first direct evidence of the presence of mycoplasma in human gastric tumor tissues. If you go back and watch another video, let me take a break from reading this to you. If you go back and watch another video, this mycoplasma has a patent on it. This bacteria called mycoplasma. There's over 200 species. 195 of them don't cause disease in the human body. Five of them can cause disease like AIDS, cancer, multiple sclerosis-like symptoms, Lou Gehrig's-like symptoms, rheumatoid arthritis, respiratory disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. There is a Japanese scientist who works for the U.S. government who holds a patent on this bacterial infection. Research has shown that they're putting it into as a secret ingredient in uh, vaccines in certain foods. Long-term mycoplasma infection of cultured cells was associated with chromosomal instability and promoted malignant transformation. Persistent infections with mycoplasma genitalium and mycoplasma hyorhinus induced malignant transformation of benign prostate cells and increased migration and invasion. Did you just hear that? This infection took benign prostate cells and turn them into malignant prostate cancer cells. Wow. Moreover, mycoplasma infection reduced P53 activation, and P53 is a tumor inhibitor uh, found in our body. So it reduced, this bacteria reduced the tumor inhibition strategy by the body and made more uh, uh, fibro, uh, fibroblast form and made more cancer cells form. It transports in a certain method. You don't have to know about that. Um, they demonstrated that its way, of, its way of transferring to parts of the body promotes more gastric cancer cell invasion and metastasis. Um, and the infection of mycoplasma can, uh, may contribute to the development of gastric cancer induced malignancy phenotypes. So the conclusion is, and we're on the last slide, thank you. The conclusion is, in summary, we have successfully detected that mycoplasma, two different types of mycoplasma, in gastric tissues, and for the first time found the correlation between the mycoplasma infection and the clinical pathologic ca characteristics of stomach cancer patients. Tumor progression, tumor growth, cancer creation, all because of this bacteria called mycoplasma. So you have a decision to make after you hear this information, and you can do more research. Maybe you want to ask your oncologist if they ever heard of mycoplasma. Ask them. They're on your team to help you. If you do have mycoplasma infection, do you just do chemotherapy? Do you just do radiation therapy? Do you just do a resection of your tissue? Take out part of the colon or the stomach? Do you try to go after that without drugs, without antibiotics that can make it worse? That's what I think. We want to be able to get rid of the biofilms that these bacteria can hide under. We want to be able to get rid of the bacteria. We want to be able to get your body to, to stop attacking the bacteria that may lead to the cancer. This bacteria can actually cause cancer. It causes an inhibition of our own body's ability to fight the cancer is what this report just said. Stop this, rewind it, listen to it again. Listen to it again if you have to. I know there's a lot of information I read there, and quite honestly, I know how to research, I know how to look for things in people, I can't remember everything, so sometimes I've gotta read you the information, folks, okay? There's just so much out there. I look forward to helping you. There is help, there is hope. We've got it here at Hope For Your Cancer. Give us a call, thank you for letting me come into your home.